still hasn't paid me. That girl down the street. And I go back and forth past her house. Back and forth past her house. She's on the porch watching her dog do his business, which isn't helping me do mine. And I finally walk over and say, I need that money like black coffee needs a paper cup. She never reaches for the dead presidents. I thought I could trust her until I saw the tattoo, but we won't get into that now. I can't decide if I should send Bruno over to collect. I hate doing that. He doesn't know when to stop. I even told her as much. I said, do you want me to send Bruno over? And she looked directly into my rods and cones with that damned Corona tattoo parked next to her belly button. But that tattoo is a different story. It's one I don't tell everyone, and I've already told you that. She laughed. Yeah, send Bruno over. She doesn't get it. And then... In front of her boyfriend, she said, Were you thinking about me when you wrote Dirty Old Man? And her boyfriend looked down at me like a guy with a job looks at a musician. Like a guy with a credit card looks at an artist. Like a guy with a car looks at a poet. And what's funny is, I was thinking about her when I wrote it. Well, not exactly, but someone just like her. Kinda. Meanwhile, she's riding around, boozing it up with her girlfriends in her four-wheel drive climate-controlled boombox, louder than a whorehouse in hell on Saturday night. And then she told me she's gonna give it away, have her boyfriend make a copy for her friend so she doesn't get blood on her hands. And she said that right to my face. She never paid for the first one. She's either very clever, or else I'm very dumb, and I'm wondering if her lips are really that pink or if that's gloss, but there's no makeup for stupid. I pick up the phone, 1-800-YO-BRUNO, but I hate to do that because Bruno doesn't know when to stop, like poets at an open mic.